Hello, my name is Eve Doyle. I am a jewellery designer and goldsmith whose work is currently on exhibition in the Inform exhibition at Collins Barracks NMI. Today I'm going to do a little demo on fold forming. So that's taking flat sheet metal and putting tracks into it, be it with a file or with a saw blade, which allow for folding points in the metal. Um, so you can create really three-dimensional pieces with very flat sheet metal. So here we go. In today's demo, I'm going to take this piece of sheet silver and I'm going to transform it into three different things. So I'm going to transform it into a hollow cube, a little pyramid shape. Well, technically not a pyramid shape, it's three-sided. <laughs> and also a free form shape that has folds in it. So Today I'm going to be using my set square, which is going to help keep my angles right, my steel block, my scribe, my dividers, my vernier gauge, a selection of square and triangular needle files, and a large file as well. And finally, a ring clamp to hold everything in. So to start out, I'm going to square up my piece of silver. And to do this, I'm using my large file and I'm going to run it the length of the silver. So I'm just going to tip this back a little bit so you can see that. Yeah, this piece was obviously cut on a guillotine, so it's fairly straight already. The only thing to check and see is if it's angling up here. So if I'm causing the file to hit it at a slight angle. But that looks pretty good. Check both sides, all good. So I've got my square end here. So that can go on my set square. And then I'm abutting it. So I'm pushing it up against this piece here. I'm checking to see if I can see any light coming through. And I can't, that's just the gleam of light hitting the edge of the metal there that you see. All right, so that's nice and square. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create my strip that I'm going to cut out for my cube. So, if our cube is six wide, then the length needs to be three times that. So our length is then 18. Finished. That's my second cut. And finally, I'm going to trim off the end. I'm going to file these up so that they're the same. And then I am going to start fold forming them. So now, using the vernier gauge, I'm marking all the way around one mil set to one millimeter because that's the thickness of the metal. So when you're chamfering, chamfering is filing something at an angle and for a cube you want to create right angles all around. So a 45 degree angle is what you're looking for on both pieces to create your 90 degree angle totally. So here we are, marked one mil all the way around, and now I'm going to file those up. Now that the two sides have had their champers put on, I have sawed in a line where I'm going to chamfer file away a 90 degree angle into that. Yeah. So I have 
put a 45 degree angle on the outsides of these. And I have sawn in a line here, here, and the same on the other. And now I'm going to go in with my square file. So this one is really going to give me a perfect angle for this. So I'm going to use the track that I've made with my saw frame, and I'm going to use that to file in using the corner of the file so that I'm getting a nice right angle edge being put in there so that when I fold this up, it's going to be at a lovely right angle. So effectively, when this has been filed right, it looks like a teeny tiny chocolate bar. So you can see how the V's have gone in there from the file, how it's chamfered at the edge, taken them away, and it looks like a teeny tiny chocolate bar. And then we start to fold it up. So I'm literally going to do this with my fingers. And you can see it comes into a lovely angle. There we go. The other side. No. So I would say this one on the left is perfect. This is a little wide. So I'm going to use my saw frame and cut through. So we now have effectively what look like two really wide paper clips. But I will solder this guy here and here and the same on this one. So where they've been folded up, they need to be soldered before we can assemble. But watch this. Very satisfying. So you'll see that piece is folded up into a cube. And yes, it needs soldering, but effectively, there you have it. Your little teeny tiny cube. So now for my three-sided, basically 3D triangle, I am going to use my dividers to create an arc. Okay. Drawing a line from where I set my dividers, I'm pulling back towards that arc. So that's my first side of the triangle. Now I have to decide how tall and skinny it is or how short and wide it is. So I'm going to set this to seven. So walking my dividers around, I'm going to mark here. here and here. Now if I wanted to make a pyramid, I would just keep going. I would do one more out here. But today we're making a triangle. So I'm going to take the marking that's the furthest most on the arc and do the same thing. Draw from the center point here right out to where that mark I've made crosses the arch, the arc. So that's another line. Now I'm going to draw lines out to my other points. So from the outer arc into the center point, one line. And again, from the center point out to the arc where it's crossed the line, that marking that I made. No. 
So at the moment, this is what, what it looks like. It's like segments. So the next step is to draw a straight line from this point to this point, this point to this point, and that point to that point, giving me the flats of my triangle. Be surprised, surprised how much it actually trims off of these arches to go point to point. No. So. Here are the three sides of our triangle. I'm going to trim out the outer sides here, 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 and here, and we'll be ready to start filing and starting folding. So I've pierced out the pieces that I had marked. You can see there are three flats, one, two, three, and then these are the two sides. So what I'm next going to do is I'm going to use my saw frame and I'm going to cut into these lines to create a small track on both of those. So now you can see that I've started a track on this side. This one just has a slight sword line in it, but this one actually has been filed away a bit. Another thing you can do is to use a graver. So a graver is a tool that has a sharpened tip that curls away metal as you push it forward. And that's what I'm about to do here. So you'll see here that I folded up one of the sides slightly. The angle is not quite right just yet. It's a little wider than a right angle and we actually want it to be considerably tighter than a right angle for it to be a three-sided triangle. Is there any other kind? Anyhow, so I have chamfered. That means I have actually filed away the metal on the edge of this piece at an angle. So this side is still as tall as it was before, but in this section I've filed it at an angle to allow clearance for when that other side comes in. So I'm going to use my saw blade now to cut through that seam a number of times and each time I'm going to fold it closed more until I get the right angle. So the angle of this is looking really good now. You can see it's coming right in there. You can imagine this other side coming up to meet that one now in a nice triangle. So I'm going to finish this guy off and I will show him to you again once he's fully formed into his little triangular self. So for my 3D triangle, in order to fold it up fully, and this happens pretty much all the time, I've had to cut the very tip off because you can see the metal is actually compressed to such a point where it wasn't going to allow it to come together at the sides otherwise. And I've kind of forced it together with some pliers there, but on the underside you can see that good triangular shape. And I'm going to solder this now, and then I'll solder a piece of wire onto the top, possibly round wire, and then file it back to my triangular shape. So we're going to solder the sides of our triangles, well, side of our triangular 3D piece. And we are also going to add a cap of round wire that I'm going to file back to create the pointed tip of the triangle. So cutting some solder pallions here. I'm just using a handheld torch for this. 
because a large torch might melt it because it's so small. So, it's everything flexed up. Put a pallion onto the top of this guy. Pallion is just the name given to the little squares that we cut the solder into. All the technical terms. Yeah, anyway. So we're going to run the solder on this in preparation for it being put on top of the triangle. And now I'm going to heat my triangle up. And it's going to take quite a bit of solder because the join is not, you know, perfectly tight at the top, I would say. It's a little wide, so. Such is life. And we are going to pop a number of pallions down here. This is just going to drink these. So I'll put another one down there. And now I'm taking a round piece of wire and a long tweezers so I don't burn my fingers. And I'm going to sweat solder it on top of this. So sweat soldering just means heating up something that has already got solder run on it while touching it against something else that hasn't necessarily got any. Okay, I'd say that's tacked in place. No, we're not. So Letting that go, I'm just going to check and make sure that I'm going to get my corners out of it. So coming down to eye level, having a look around at each angle, and turn it around. Yeah, I feel fairly certain that that's going to work. I'll just give it one last heat to make sure that it's sitting fully down. And you saw there it moved. I just meant that. It was sitting a little high. Yep, that'll do. So our triangle is soldered. So we here we are after soldering. And you'll see I've filed back that round wire to a point. So we now have one excessively sharp 3D triangle. It's very hard to see it in this light, but anyhow, that's it from the top view. And that's how it looks from the sides. And you'll see. So talking about geometric forms made out of fold forming. This here is a geometric pendant that I made. And each of these folded almost curls, I would say, of metal are made out of thin sheet metal, which has been scored and folded up. And actually, if I flick this around, you can see the score lines are still visible. So I didn't run solder inside of them. I just used them to create the shapes and then actually soldered them one to another to give them the strength to hold together properly. And that's been riveted in place. But you can see how effective fold forming can be. But in order to figure this out, I had to do some research. So when doing more organic forms, we always start out with card and you'll see these are all numbered um, and percentiled so I would have started with them a certain size and then I would have photocopied it down to scale and um, printed that stuck it onto a piece of card and then trimmed it out and using a scalpel cut the lines in so I could see, I could get a feel for how the metal would fold. So I have a whole slew of these that tell me how the metal will fold. And then these also act as, as templates. So you'll see that's a trial piece. This is in gilding metal. And these are also trial pieces to see make sure that what I saw in card would translate into the metal. 
So using one of these templates, I am going to cut out And now that I've done all of that, as simple as I'm going to fold it with my fingers. So I'm going to hold it on the back, my thumbs on the inside, and I'm going to bend it. I can use my bench peg for some leverage to get a stronger angle and bend it right up. So depending on how extreme you want it, you know, you can fold it like that. But for me, actually, for those pieces, I just folded them slightly. It gave more of an attractive look to them. So for this last one, I'm actually going to use a pliers because it's difficult for me to get accessibility with my thumbs. So there you go. Got a nice curve going on here and these cool faceted looking planes going across. So, and that was the card sample. So you can see, the card is telling me pretty much exactly what my metal is going to become. Good fun, huh? So that's the triangle, that's the cube, and then, that's our free form folded piece of metal.